Yeah, and we were doing a lot of sort of speed um, action around the studio as you were watching that. Dr. Ken Hudson with me in the studio. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Carson. Uh, question from the gallery just in my ear as we, as we were watching that. Speed thinking as you're trying to land an aircraft, you know, arguably not advisable, or perhaps it is. How far does this kind of concept br extend out into the industry? Yeah, it's a great question. I think that you can um, apply it to most situations, but I don't think it replaces um, existing or traditional thinking. It sort of complements it. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine the analogy I use, it's a bit like um, going for a gym workout. Uh, yeah. workout. So you, you stretch, you walk, you run, and then there's a sprint. Mm -hmm. Speed thinking is a sort of sprint component of... Um, uh, the thinking system, you know, so and the important thing is with all this stuff is that you can vary the pace at which you think mm -hmm. So when it's appropriate to think slow you think slow when when it's appropriate to think fast mm -hmm. you can think fast You've kind of um, maybe stolen from the dump from the, the Rumsfeld doctrine One of the interesting things is if you're having a meeting speed it up by don't by not sitting down That would be interesting uh, to look at what they do in camera if they pull all the seats out of cabinet <laughs> and just did it all around <laughs> the table You know what you cut decision-making down by a third. Yes, that's right. There, there's some recent research which said that um, meetings, just stand-up meetings, can reduce the time mm -hmm. by a third mm -hmm. and the decision-making quality is not impacted, mm -hmm. but people actually feel more productive and they feel like they're having a better meeting. Mm -hmm. But it's all around this notion of that if you want your brain to work quicker, in my view, um, and there's increasingly research that supports this, that you've got to move your body. Mm -hmm. So if you want your, you know, Move our brain, move our body, move our body, move our brain. Well, there was a lot of that going on in the video, wasn't there? Just practically, what were they all doing? They had the pens out, the, the, you know, the whiteboards were getting a, a good workout. Yeah. What are you getting those people to do? Yeah. And what can we do now? Is it like a sort of bit of a, a dummy run of it? OK. Yeah. The, the whole principle behind that is this idea that, um, that, when you, that everyone plays. Mm. So by everyone having a pen, it means that everyone can capture their own ideas in their own words, um, with their own space, at, you know, at their own speed. Mm. See, the biggest problem in things like brainstorming, for example, is we slow the meeting down, or the meeting is, the speed of the meeting is dictated by the person who, who actually writes up the ideas. Yeah. Well, you say that, but what about the idea of, you know, you can have too many Indians or too many chiefs and not enough Indians. If they're all writing, you know, you can have chaos theory, can't you? You need one person to take charge and say, right, I'm setting the agenda, no? Not really. No? <laughs> no, Why really, not? no. Why not? <laughs> no, I'd much rather have too many ideas, and, but, but I think there's this lovely idea that we talk about, which I, is in chaos theory, actually, is mm. called operating at the edge of chaos. Mm. And a speed thinking session is actually operating at the edge of the chaos. And, or in my language, it, it operates, and that's why it's so powerful, it operates at the edge of your unconscious. Because your unconscious is always solving problems and making random associations. And mm. just for a brief moment, for two minutes at a time, um, we can, through this process, we can actually download and take advantage of um, what's operating in your unconscious. So what can we do now? Okay, you ready for it? Go for it. Okay, we normally have two minutes, but because Carson, you're right. so quick, right. we'll only do it in 30 seconds. <laughs> it's huh? the coffee can. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. This is better than a coffee and it's cheaper. All right, really? Okay, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what are nine good things that you've done this year? Oh, you want just a, a list? Yep, yep. And the, one of the important things is you just start, don't filter. Okay, I've um, done a lot of travel. Good. Um, taking up the gym. Yep. Uh, gosh, Sky Business Channel. Yeah. Of course. That should have been number one. <laughs> um, okay. yeah, right. This is not live, is it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, perhaps, uh, you know, just uh, re-evaluated options and uh, taking a, a fresh read on, on where, where, where I'm going and, yeah. and, uh, and all that. So I've um, taken a bit of a break as well. Good. With a holiday. Yeah. How many is that? Five. Five. That's good. Five. Yeah, you're looking good. All that's, right. That's enough probably. Okay. All right. So this is the start of the speed thinking process. The speed thinking process says it's just about starting. Mm -hmm. Because one of the biggest barriers for everyone is just that they don't know how to start. Mm -hmm. But if you say to people, look, you're going to create nine possibilities in, in two minutes, then people are just forced to very focus mm -hmm. right in the moment access, trust their own intuition, access their unconscious, and then they start. And they start, and where's the end point? You, you the end point is um, you, you go through a process of start, build, evaluate, and then do, and you've got to do something. Mm -hmm. So it always ends up with um, you know, a decision, a, uh, a better idea, mm -hmm. or a solution. So start, build, evaluate, do. So with those nine ideas, what was that 
what was the endpoint designed for that? Let's make the list, then what? The endpoint, then it says, okay, well, look, what's the most, um, what, out of that list, what would be the most interesting one of those, um, uh, like take a break, you mm. mentioned. Mm. Okay, so what we might do is actually say, right, well, what's the most interesting one? Take a break could be one. Okay, so what are nine ways that you might develop that or build that? Mm -hmm. So how did you, um, what, what is, when you had a break, what did you do? Mm -hmm. Well, I did, a lot of, I did a lot of travel and um, tied up some loose ends on different continents. Yep, yeah. okay, great. Yeah. What about that other question I asked you before we went on air? Yes, that would be telling <laughs> a number of different uh, closely guarded <laughs> secrets, Ken. We won't okay, go Okay, we won't. We'll move well, on. Okay. <laughs> no, so what we do is we start, yeah. we build, and then we create a raw thought and we create a, a better idea. And then we say, well, let's evaluate those ideas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but again, we can be creative and, and in the way we evaluate ideas and do it very quickly. Mm -hmm. One of the problems when people evaluate ideas or evaluate solutions, they, they overemphasize, they overanalyze it, and they always find what's wrong with the idea. Mm -hmm. But if you said, for example, in two minutes, what are the ideas that you feel most passionate about? Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then you pick the idea, you say, score it from one to ten. Those ideas that score the most passion, you know, they go ahead and start doing those. Uh, briefly, finally, you know, are you when you when you get a team of people together, you know, are you trying to pull them outside their work environment, get them to focus on completely different issues as a kind of a, a cleansing process, or is this very much focused on what's going on on their day to day? How does it how does it balance out? Right. Well, when you learn the principles and the techniques and the tools and the process, you can apply it to business problems, and you can or you can apply it to your personal life. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. It's just a way of thinking. Yeah. And the great news is that we can all learn it. It's um, it's easy, simple, mm -hmm. um, and it's just what we do. Because you say to people, when do you do your best thinking? And, and they always bemoan that they want more time, but you ask them, when do they do their best thinking? They always say, when I'm under the gun and I've got to deliver something yeah. in an hour's time. Yeah. And you say, what, best decisions made in the, in the least amount of time. Don't delay, don't obfuscate. First impressions, what? Generally the right ones? Yeah, generally for, right, first impressions, get it out. Yep. And once you've got it out, then you can talk about mm -hmm. it and then you can discuss it. Right. So, um... Good start to the week. Ken, you should be at the Fed right this moment trying to sort out those problems with Lehman's. Yes, that's, that's not big enough for me. It's not big no, enough? No, that, that problem. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, well, you deal with Centro because we've got some breaking news on that. Ken Hudson, Thank you. great to have you with us. Thanks very much. Of course, uh, academic, author and, you know, and, you know I guess... Um, Guru, you could call him Dr. Ken Hudson.